It's amazing what paint can do. We painted the house, that was a lot of work. I painted the front door black for some contrast. And finally, I stenciled the patio to look like tile for a new looking entry. Have ugly tile? You can paint it. I used Stick's bonding primer first, then a thick layer of oil-based enamel, white for the walls and charcoal for the floor. I gave my dated bathroom a makeover. First, I painted the walls and the ceiling charcoal gray. Then I painted the backsplash with oil-based enamel and even painted the plastic side panel of the tub. Here's an easy $20 mirror frame. First, measure and select your boards. Cut the boards at a 45 degree angle, apply liquid nails on the back, and tape them in place. I gave this scuffed up tile a paint makeover. First, I used bonding primer, and then an oil-based enamel, and finally, clear polycrylic to seal it. Urethane molding with pre-made corners is an easy way to put up molding. I put the corners up first with liquid nails, glue, and finishing nails. Next, I cut the trim to fit inside. I used a miter saw, but you can cut urethane easily by hand. Caulk everything and done. Here's a $5 pillow I made from a placemat in five minutes. Find a double-sided placemat, cut down the center of the back, stuff in a down insert, stitch up the back, or not. This is perfect for seasonal pillows. Stencils are a great alternative to wallpaper. I did this room for $40. You spray the back with adhesive, place it on the wall with a small amount of paint. I'm using a sponge here. Peel it off, wipe the paint off the stencil, and keep going. Today, let's stencil with a roller. Roll off the excess paint, bend the stencil around corners. It's important to wipe each time afterward. Also, these are textured walls. It takes time, but I love the result. Three ways to stencil. A roller is easiest and some parts will be more faded. A stencil brush gives a vintage feel, but takes the longest. A high density sponge gives even coverage. Window molding in five minutes. This is a pre-made crosshead. Apply painter's tape to the front, flip and apply liquid nails. Apply above the window and press down the tape. Let it dry and that's it. Here's a cheap way to add character to your home. This plastic ceiling medallion costs $20 or less. All you have to do is layer it in when you change out a fixture. That's it, you can paint it or leave it white. What's the easiest way to wallpaper? Paste, pre-pasted, yikes. Peel and stick, I've done all three and peel and stick is the winner for me. No worries about glue drying out or making a huge mess. And you can take it on and off easily. Sometimes peel and stick isn't available. I use pre-mixed paste. Start on a straight edge, roll the paste on the wall, spray with water to keep it from drying, smooth well, and trim the bottom with a utility knife. Wallpaper can make a statement in small places. This mural costs $64 from Amazon. I put half of it on each side. The back wall is charcoal for a little depth and drama. I'm toying with the idea of writing titles with a Sharpie. What do you think? If you find the perfect mural, but it's too small, frame it. I used urethane molding and corners. It is lightweight and it cuts easily. I painted them first and I put them up on the wall with a small amount of glue and a few finishing nails. I culped the corners and touched up the paint. Do you think I should paint the sides the same green color? Let's talk accent walls. I wanted to give our all white living room some drama and contrast, so I painted this section black. It was $25 and only took a couple of hours. This color is nothing fancy, just straight black out of the can. Do you have any accent walls in your home? For Legoland, I mean my boy's shared room, I added common boards for a dimension and this peacock green paint for impact. It shifts from blue to green with the light and makes such a statement in this ordinary box of a room. P.S. This is probably the third time the beds have ever been made. Now I paint without tape. It's important to get an angled brush. 
you hold the brush sideways to cut in and then go back in with the brush flat. For the roller, get enough paint that is not dripping. That's probably too much. The key is to go slowly, not to splatter. If you get enough paint on the roller, you should only have to do one coat, one width of the roller, ceiling to floor. Painting doesn't have to be a monumentous task. I have three kids and paint sporadically when I can. I put everything on a kitchen trash bag. I use disposable tray liners for easy cleanup. To save a brush for a day or two, I wrap it in plastic and Ziploc it. To save a roller, I load it with paint and put it inside the trash bag. When the project is done, I put my brush in water. Most of the paint sinks to the bottom and it's easier to clean. I thought I'd give my daughter's room a pop of color and paint the door to match her mural. Two steps. One, paint the door with Styx bonding primer. Two, then paint the door with semi-gloss latex paint. This is the third door I've painted after a year and it still looks great. Here are two hacks for inexpensive curtains. These are from Ikea. I like curtain rings because they're easy to slide back and forth. And my mom taught me this little trick to gather the fabric in a little pleat before clipping it on the ring. It's an easy detail to make your curtains look more custom. And then I sewed pom-pom trim along the sides for a fun detail. This yellow intercom was an eyesore. It was around $800 for a new one. What? So I decided to spray paint it. I taped off the display and took a picture of where the buttons are. Then I sprayed lightly with a flat white primer. Lightly is the key. You can see the buttons faintly and it hasn't even nicked yet. I have a feeling this will make TikTok freak out, so here's an easier solution. Cover it with a wall hanging. You can even hear music through the macrame. Here's my large pillow hack. I found these rugs at World Market and thought they'd be better as pillows. You fold rug in half, sew two sides. I used a whip stitch and fill with inserts and then sew the remaining opening. I was tired of the vacuum sitting out in the laundry room, so I decided to see if it would fit in this teeny tiny little closet at the end of our hallway, and it did, barely. So I kept going. I added some peel and stick wallpaper and acrylic shelves to make it pretty and functional, the best kind of combo. cheap art idea with big impact. I found vintage posters for $9 each at Paper Source. I didn't want to pay $17 for a poster kit to hang them, so I made my own for $3. First, you cut a dowel in half, and then use packing tape at the top to prevent tearing from the staples, and then staple the poster from the back. Tie a string on the dowel, and I like to use upholstery nails to hang them. Problem. Let's see if I can be more clear this time. So you push in the lever to pull the rod out. You use the built-in cutter to cut the top of the tube. 
and you can use the puncture tool that swivels around from underneath if needed. To load the gun, make sure the rod is pulled back and insert the tube. Then pull the trigger. I hope that helps. Do plastic anchors intimidate you? Or whatever this is. I discovered self-drilling anchors and they are so much easier and stronger. You simply drill the anchor itself into the drywall and then screw as well. No longer intimidated. Here's a quick way to paint grout. I tried this pen on our worn out kitchen grout in dark gray. You shake, press the tip, and draw on clean tile. Wipe off excess. One pen was plenty for the kitchen and it took me less than an hour. I think the dining room is next. I'm a terrible plant mom, so why should you listen to me? Because these are the plants I haven't killed. can go on hair, skin, pets, but not cats. Today I'm using it on this hibiscus plant that has mealybugs. A small amount of oil with dish soap and water. Spray liberally, it's a natural insecticide and fungicide. I thought this gate needed an arbor. I found this metal one on Amazon and quickly put it together. It was crooked without the help of the fence, so we had to find a way to reinforce it. We put rebar in with a rubber mallet for it to slide onto and used two hose clamps on either side to tie it to the fence. We planted jasmine to grow up the trellis. I'm so excited to see it grow. Here's an easy outdoor blank wall solution. These faux ivy trellises easily compact or expand for most walls. They're great for weddings or shower backdrops, so pretty with twinkle lights. Oops, that needs a little straightening. One week to a clean house. It's Monday and my house is messy. So this week I'm setting the timer for one hour a day in a different space to do as much as possible. I have a free printable for you in my bio and I'd love for you to clean along each day. You can adapt it and make it your own. It's not rocket science, but it's helpful to have a schedule and set the timer. It makes things seem more doable. Two things I like to do is use a Brillo pad for my stainless steel sink, my silverware and pans. It makes them clean in no time. The other thing is I put a bowl of water with a little white vinegar and heat it for five minutes. It loosens up the dirt and makes it easy to clean. Add in half a lemon if you have one. One week to a clean house, day two, the closet and bedroom. The printable is in my bio. You might not finish everything in an hour, but you will have made progress. You can do it again next week to get your space where you'd like it to be. Today is brutal for me because I work from home and my office is in my bedroom. I'm mainly doing surface stuff, but if you'd like to dig deeper, check out my 20-page organizing planner in my Etsy shop. I'll tidy my workplace, change sheets, and dust everything. The closet isn't too bad. I'll throw in some laundry and straighten up my shoes. I loved all your cleaning hacks yesterday. Keep them coming. 
Day three of cleaning for one hour. Today is the kids' spaces. I'm going to spend 30 minutes in the kids' rooms and then 30 in our disaster of a kid cabinet. The kids are responsible for picking up after themselves, but I'm gonna get rid of some stuff today. Don't worry, I respect their things and we talked about it beforehand. This room needed just less. So I gave away an armchair and I'm relocating most toys not Lego related for space. It's such a great toy, I don't mind it taking over their room. My five-year-old's room didn't take long. Aside from her hoarding, she's not messy and I sorted through her stuff pretty regularly. I just washed their sheets and floors are Friday. I think I'll ask them to dust their rooms this weekend. If you don't have kids living at home, spend your one hour doing that one spot you've been putting off. You know the one. This is where we keep our school and art supplies and it got way out of hand with distant learning and then going back to school. There we go. A lot can happen in an hour if you hustle. How I organize with three kids. Create a drop zone. We don't have a mud room, so I put this rack up. The kids are responsible to pull out their lunches and hang up their own stuff each day. I color code all kinds of things to know whose is whose. They have their own color or cup for the day, their own shelf for homework and school supplies. Kids are a million times likely to hang up a towel on a hook than a rack, it's a fact. We don't buy a whole lot of clothes. The kids have a few family chores they need to accomplish before earning money. I'll put the link in my bio. Perfect is not my goal, but simple is, the more we simplify our life, the faster we can get to the good stuff, spending time together. Day four of our one week to clean a house list and it's laundry day. I know, I'm not happy about it either. I'm not about to give you laundry advice because my laundry game is a hot mess. Think clothes sitting in the dryer for three days, but today I'm setting the timer for one hour and folding whatever I can and putting it away. And yes, I know you can't get all the laundry done in an hour. It's just a way to make progress. Floor day. I highly recommend Dyson, not sponsored, just a good high-powered vacuum. After vacuuming, use your mop, Swiffer, steamer, whatever you've got in high traffic areas. I have this Hoover floor cleaner because we have a lot of tile. My one hour timer did not allow me to get the whole house done, but that's okay. I also didn't get to it today, but I love this $99 carpet cleaner. It saved a couple rugs for me. One more tip. If you can't get your old grout clean, you can use a grout pen. Bathroom day, setting the timer for an hour. First, decluttering. Next comes bathtub and sinks. I just used a sponge and dish soap. My shower is painted, so I use the same here, but in the boys' shower, occasionally I use baking soda and hot vinegar. Hot vinegar is the trick. Scrub and rinse. You can also make your own shower spray with water, hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol, dish soap, and rinse aid because I know you got on here to talk about toilets. Our hard water leaves rings. Someone here told me about pumice cleaners and it works really well. And finally, most toilets have a lid that removes for cleaning. My house always has dirt and messes someplace. That's just part of life. But a little at a time really helps. What to do with those thousands of photos on your phone. Each January, I upload all the phone photos to my computer. I go through the past year's photos and select only my favorites. I save them to an external hard drive and Google or Flickr, Amazon, whatever makes you feel safe. I like to make a yearly photo book with Shutterfly and wait for the free page sales for the best deal. And then the scary part, I delete the photos off my computer and phone. New TVs with frames are pretty, but expensive and I don't want the TV on all day. So I decided to make my own. I use trim screws to make my frame. It's a combo of a finishing nail and screw. Two inch pieces went inside to mount it to the wall. I settled on cheap canvases for my doors. I used adhesive spray and a staple gun to wrap the canvases and posters. Piano hinges work well so the doors can open all the way. And we use lag bolts to bolt it to the wall studs. Let's paint the front door. I wanted the hinges to match the handle so I spray painted them gold. I used a box to shield the door and wall from extra paint. Next, I painted a layer of bonding primer to make sure my paint would stick. And then thin strokes of semi-gloss paint in Sage Wisdom. You can use an artist brush to go around small details.
30 years old, my husband and I rented an old apartment with rusty appliances and we were $18,000 in credit card debt. But we got side jobs and pinched every penny and bought our first house. We sold it and our second house at a profit and continued to save. At 40 years old, we were able to buy this house and my in-laws live in the guest house. At 72 years old, my in-laws sold everything and moved here from Italy. But that's an emotional story for another day. I had so much fun getting this space ready to surprise them. More home tours on the way. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make your home your own. Let's start with the living room on our frugal home tour. I completed this board and batten wall all by myself in two days with no power tools and no skill. It was under $100. I had the boards cut at Home Depot and put some liquid nails on the back and nailed them up. I used a $40 stencil on the walls instead of wallpaper. Next, I added some snake plants on the ledge. Real ones were much cheaper than faux, $20 at our local Florida nursery, and I water them once a month. I figured out a way to frame the TV and cover it with art panels. I decided this wall should be black for the time being and made my own easy free art on to go with it on the wall. I made inexpensive pillows from rugs to save money. And finally added a little bling to this eyesore. Next on our tour is the reading nook. This little space sat empty for two years. I was saving for built-ins and then one day I just moved these Ikea shelves from the playroom here. I bought these two chairs and rug from Walmart and I got this fixture on clearance at West Elm. I'm so sorry it's out of stock. I added a $14 ceiling medallion as well. Fun details like this ottoman and wood table are from Ross Dress for Less, a great place for cheap accessories. I added molding to these two walls. It's much easier than you think. It's urethane, so lightweight, cuts easily, and pre-made corners are a great shortcut. And finally, for some DIY art, I printed flowers from freepick.com, painted them, and put them in gold frames. Oh, and the trick to hanging frames by the string is to have two sets of nails so it doesn't fall on your head. Don't ask how I know. And there she is, my favorite spot in the house. One day built-ins will be gorgeous, but right now I am content with my Ikea shelves. Frugal Home Frugal Tour home Part tour 3, part the, dining three. Room. the Dining Room. There was a broken pocket was a broken door here that led to the office, here that led and the office, the office has two doors. The office has two so doors. some friends so helped us close in the wall for about $150. I added a board and batten wall to add some character and break up this big wall. That cost about $100. And that cost about I lightly spray painted this yellowing intercom. It was a risk, but it worked. It was a risk, And Marcello bought this giant wine cooler for $250. I stripped it and used lining wax for a bleached wood effect. The tutorial is in my bio under DIY. Two, I two packs, packs IKEA cabinets, cabinets provide plenty of storage, storage and balance, balance either, either size. size cooler. I bought this nine foot table at a consignment store for nine hundred. And someone was giving this dresser away, so I gave someone it a coat of white dresser and like the chip I gave it a white. I usually have a disco ball here because I love the way the sun dances off of it. And I found this oversized jump pendant for two hundred dollars at CB2. This space is purposefully light and airy, so I can transform it for any occasion. So I can transform it for any occasion. Home tour part four. Usually home tours feature a beautiful kitchen with shiny new tile and custom cabinetry, but this is a frugal home tour series, so welcome to my kitchen with all the ledges you can handle. Transportation back to the Starship Enterprise, peeling laminate cabinets, and two small pantries that don't quite make sense. The only things I did in the kitchen were use a $10 stencil to make a faux backsplash and added some shelving. Shelving above the door is a great way to utilize space. Oh, and I painted the side of the fridge white so it would have the appearance of a built-in. I used bonding primer first and then oil-based enamel. But my best frugal tip is to be content with what you have. Try to see the good in this space. The counter is nice and the layout works. One day we'll tear this wall down, cabinets and hood will go to the ceiling, but for now, we're happy and saving and not in debt. Frugal Home Tour Part 5, The Home Office. This was our guest room, but now that my husband and I are both working from home, we recently turned it into our office. It's basically an ode to Ikea. I painted half walls in bare French gray. It works up well to break up these two long walls. I hung an ocean mural for a focal point for $110. The ceiling is painted Benjamin Moore Harbor Haze because I love a painted ceiling. The fixture was 70. I added a pre-made piece of trim above the window for $28, and we've had these IKEA desks and chairs for years. Buying classic pieces that don't go out of style always helps save. I hung some $24 sconces for a soft lighting and detail, and the shelves on either side were $12. 
I highly do not recommend the wardrobe. These doors are a pain. Also, don't forget to shop your own house. I swiped this chair from our lanai. My husband sells wine and his background is all set up for conference calls and my computer is not in my room anymore. Six, the playroom, with a surprise at the end. It's a garage that a previous homeowner closed in. I have lots of design ideas for this space, but what the kids love best is that it has lots of space for games and play. First, I added wallpaper. This is one mural for $85 that I split in half to go on either side of the window. I painted everything Benjamin Moore Sage Wisdom and added blockout sage curtains. To make the mural go all the way to the edges, I painted some trim and added it to either side. I painted this wall with a can of $10 chalkboard paint and added $5 IKEA spice racks for books. This shelf is also from IKEA. The rug is from Amazon, around 150, and we've had this couch for over a decade. And now the fun part. I left this wall blank for movie nights. This $100 projector takes up the whole wall and it's so fun. We have it hooked to an Amazon Fire Stick. Home tour part seven, the master bedroom. I'm not quite done with this space, but I'll show you what I have so far. I just moved my desk out of here, so the space is pretty empty, but I kind of like the simplicity. It's not as frugal as the other rooms because I splurged on wallpaper. When you save almost everywhere else, sometimes it's fun to go big. And I loved this chinoiserie style I found on Etsy. Stencil carries over from the bathroom. The frames were $12 each from Ross, and I found these candle sconces on clearance at World Market. I painted the back wall Kendall charcoal for some drama and took this branch out of the yard and strung a banner across for cheap art. In the painted ceiling, Benjamin Moore Sage Wisdom and added a boho chandelier. The ceiling medallion is plastic and costs only $15. Maybe I'll add a rug and a comfy chair. My plan is also to paint these two doors the same sage color, but I'm a little sick of painting at the moment. Frugal Home Tour Part 8, The Master Bathroom. This makeover cost about $300 because it's almost all paint. And I painted the entire shower, walls, backsplash, side of the tub, the floor, and grout. I also stenciled the wall in this classic pattern and added a frame to the mirrors. I even wallpapered the water closet with this fun book mural. You can find a detailed painting tutorial on my blog, but it's basically a thick coat of bonding primer topped with oil-based enamel. I had no idea how controversial painting tile was until I posted this last year. Talk about roasted on TikTok. But three things. One, this is our forever home. We're not selling it to anyone else. Two, I don't expect it to hold up like factory tile. Three, this is just to hold us over until we can afford to remodel. It's been a year and it's held up great. Home tour part nine, my boys shared room. It's always covered in Lego. Bunk beds from Ikea are holding up great. That dresser came with the house and the desks are from Target. The boys room was very bland and needed some personality. So I decided on a bold teal accent wall with board and batten. The color is Newburgh green. I added a fun detail to the ceiling by stamping it with a foam star in the same color. I also found some affordable posters and hung them with cheap wooden dowels above the desks. I like to use upholstery tacks instead of regular nails. I added an entire wall of cork board for all their master planning. It was super simple too. Home tour part 10, my six-year-old daughter's room. There are lots of frugal finds here, but also a few splurges that I wanted to invest in as this is our forever home. The wallpaper was the splurge, but it's also the star of the show. I didn't fit it all the way to the edges, so I added a frame. I found shelves on Craigslist and painted them white. I painted the door with a sample of paint, and she begged me for this hot pink chair at a consignment store. This huge macrame tapestry adds texture to the wall without distracting from the mural. I love to add in wood elements like this rattan mirror. And the desk was mine as a girl. I sewed pom-pom trim to Ikea curtains and added some fun gold star decals to the ceiling. Another splurge is this pretty fixture I couldn't resist. In the closet, I refinished this $30 dresser I bought secondhand. I found this Barbie house by the side of the road and gave it a makeover. My final frugal home tour, part 11, I think? My daughter's bathroom. Are you ready? I didn't care for the original tile, so I painted it. 
She loves pink. I figured why not do something out of the box if we're gonna remodel in a few years anyway. There's a full tutorial on my blog, but I used bonding primer and then oil-based enamel. I started with coral gables on the bottom row of tiles and then added a uniform amount of white as I went up. I was lucky the color is beautiful in all shades. Because it's on the wall and not the floor, it doesn't get touched much and has held up for two years so far. It costs $60, including brushes. On the adjacent wall, I added a chair rail and pre-made frames. It's simple to do, especially on a wall with no corners and adds loads of character. Then I put up this tapestry that I already had. I added a little shelf and now this bathroom has a completely different look. Finally finished painting the hallway after four months. This is what it looked like when we moved in. Then a couple of years ago, I installed wainscoting with pre-made forms and chair rail. This year, I painted the doors and trimmed Benjamin Moore Sage Wisdom. I used bonding primer first and then a semi-gloss enamel. I finally decided on Benjamin Moore Paper White for the walls. I also painted these old hinges black with an artist's brush. Will they hold up? We'll see. I've never tried it before. But right now, it adds detail and coordinates with the door handles. Need a blank wall solution? How about wallpaper? I chose this dramatic heron mural by Wall Blush. Peel and stick is definitely the easiest way to hang wallpaper. Simply peel the top, stick it in place, and peel off the backing as you go, smoothing out all the bubbles. Use a level to make sure each piece will line up correctly. If you didn't get it right the first time, no problem. Just pull it up and reapply. Then cut excess off with a utility knife. I finished the whole thing in one morning and the best part is is that it's removable and damage free to walls. What do you think? Would you ever give wallpaper a try? Overhead lighting can be harsh. Let's cozy things up with these eight lighting ideas. First, I love to add table lamps all over the house on bookshelves, desks, bedside, ambiance for the dining room. Floor lamps can make a statement and balance out home decor. I love sconces like this plug-in one. It even has a dimmer. Rope lighting can go under cabinets or over ledges. You know I'm always trying to figure out what to do with these ledges. Twinkle lights aren't just for Christmas. I keep this curtain of lights up all year and it brings happiness to a rainy day. I love the cozy glow from these paper lanterns in both of my kids' rooms. And these battery operated candles can be set with a timer. And finally, consider putting overhead lighting on a dimmer to soften things up. This DIY blew my mind. Two steps to faux wood. It is crazy, I tell you. This is painted. I turned these thrifted frames into this without sanding or varnish stripping. You only need two products, bare burnished clay and flat finish and dark vintage antiquing wax. First, I'll paint the frames in the flat paint. The more texture, the better, but go in the same direction like real wood. After that dries, I apply the antiquing wax with a cloth and that's it. I really can't believe it. voted in my last video what I should paint in these frames and the clear winner was the same on TikTok and Instagram. I counted them all. It's a simple one with a little color and that was my favorite too actually. Thank you so much for your help and you can check out how I painted the frames to look like wood two videos ago. Can you believe these nightstands are painted to look like wood? We've had these dark tables for about a decade and I'm ready for a change. First, I took off the hardware and lightly sanded so the bonding primer would have something to hold on to. I washed the tables and then primed them. This was a long story of trial and error, but to keep it quick, the right way is to paint two thin coats of bonding primer with shellac to adhere to the slick surface. The full tutorial and products are on my blog and on YouTube. I added two thin coats of burnished clay and flat finish with my trim brush, paying special attention to go with the grain and look out for drips. Now prepare to be amazed. Put on your gloves and rub in the antiquing wax with a clean rag. It's crazy to see how much it looks like real wood. And now for the fingernail test. I let these cure for a day and then I gave them a good scratch and they held up. What do you think? What piece of furniture would you like to try this on? 
Today I've got five packing hacks plus two free printables. Number one, packing cubes. To make things easier to find, I use these. Each family member has their own color. It makes it easier to share suitcases and I find them easier than taking five different bags. Number two, a hanging toiletry bag. I love this bag. I used to travel with three makeup bags, one for hair, face, makeup, but now I can hang this beauty up and see everything all at once. Number three, the perfect carry-on bag. I love a travel bag that opens easily with lots of pockets. This one is versatile and lightweight, but it holds so much stuff. Four, create a wardrobe capsule. Our last two trips, I've used this seven piece capsule from Amazon. Everything mixes and matches. Five, kids foldable backpacks. We have used these collapsible bags for years and it's nice not to have to empty school bags. I got these Amazon Fire tablets on Prime Day for $50 each. If your child's device has a headphone jack like these, get a couple sets of splitters so you can watch together. Printables and links are all in my bio. Here's a $15 experiment with contact paper. I'm gonna make this ledge look like a wood beam. I measured and carefully covered the beam with this peel and stick paper, taking time to work with it and get straight lines. I think it adds a lot of warmth in this space. What do you think? The great part is that it's super easy to take back down. Let's add some color to these doors. I can't wait to show you which one. First, I cleaned the doors and taped them off. See, I do use tape sometimes. Primer is the most important step though because without it, the paint will chip. I'm using Kills 3 Premium Primer because it's heavy duty and mildew resistant to protect against three kiddos in humid Florida weather. Use thin strokes in the same direction. I like an artist's brush to get around small details. Next is the color. I had to go with my gut and Magnolia Green was calling my name. Really enjoying slowly adding details and personality to this house. What is on your list to paint? Welcome to our new fire pit in the woods. To create this space, I first spray painted a 15 foot circumference and then added edging along. I assembled the firing and then stacked pavers with adhesive in between. I left gaps in the bottom in hopes to allow cool air in and reduce the overall smoke. Sand and gravel went in the center, and finally we added the rest of the gravel. I bought these patio sets from Facebook Marketplace and added a string of solar lights. 